Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. My name is Muhammad Fidels with the guidance of Sir Zainal Mikhail and my co-supervisor Sir Mikdad for this semester. My final year project, I will be presenting about my CFD analysis of a spiral tube heat exchanger. Beginning with our table of contents, we have the project summary for the first one. We have the background of study, problem statement and of course the objectives. Uh, the scope of work, the literature review, methodology, expected results, the gun chart, and also the reference. So, for the summary, uh, it is to study the thermal and hydrodynamic parameters of a spiral tube heat exchanger which already exists and will be tested using the CFD analysis software and compared with a modified version of the same product as the reference for future improvements. Also, the aim of this study is to, stu uh, is to investigate the effect of the heat transfer coefficient, the heat exchange performance and also the temperature variation outlet of the spiral tube heat exchanger inside the cylindrical shell. And, all, and the last one, the parameters that will be adjusted to study the corresponding variables are the number of flat tube spiral windings and also the tube diameter that will be adjusted for the best result. Heat exchanger has become very significant when it comes to refrigeration process, cooling process and also some boiling process. However, there are several limitations that limits their ability to complete a perfect heat transfer cycle. The most common one that we can see is the low heat flow rates in heat exchange that seems to be a common limitation in heat transfer process. This would result in a very low heat transfer coefficient and depletes the heat transfer efficiency along with the conductivity which are the variables that need to be adjusted and avoided in heavy engineering industry. So we come across with the objective to overcome these problem statements. First is to analyze the mechanisms of a spiral tube heat exchanger using the finite element analysis or FEA software. Second is to conduct a thermal simulation for the particular heat exchanger. And the last one is to improve the rate of heat transfer, the heat transfer coefficient and also the efficiency of the spiral tube heat exchanger. Moving on to the scope of work, it is just a rough overview of the design mechanism of the spiral tube heat exchanger. So the product will consist of a 12mm copper tube with 0.5mm thickness inside a 10 inch diameter of PVC cylindrical shell. So the model would draft meshed and simulate to investigate the f uh, flow of fluid medium based on the parameters set using the SOLIDWORKS software. And for the preliminary result, the product uh, will be set on total of 5 tube winding, which is the 12mm tube, and uh, the external and internal domain temperature will be set based on the design reference to get a near accurate result. Moving on to the literature review, they are divided into three subsections, which is the first one we can see is the design of the spiral tube heat exchanger. There are three different research papers that I have looked into and to pick the best design for the spiral tube heat exchanger which is serves the best fluid, cons uh, fluid residence, the consistency of the fluid flow and also the rate of heat exchanger. So the first research paper seems to be the most suitable journal that I can look and refer as a reference for my final year project because it has a compact size of 10 inch PVC shell, a, long, a longer fluid resident inside the shell and also a constant heat exchange across the internal and external domain. Moving across the second one, which is the tube diameter of the spiral tube heat exchanger. Since the design of the product is compact, lots of consideration needs to take part for this project. 
the diameter of spiral tube heat exchanger plays a critical part in delivering the best heat transfer process since the surface area of the product is changed. From this six research paper that I have read, I could comprehend that the tube diameter is directly proportional to the heat transfer rate. As the diameter increases, the enlargement of the tube surface area would result in a better heat transfer rate as well as the heat transfer performance. So we've come across to the last subsection which is the number of spiral tube winding. Uh, from this research paper on the spiral wound heat exchanger, we can see that the added amount of tube layer inside the wounding could help change the effectiveness of the heat exchanger. So I believe in my own design, I would consider that by adding another flat spiral tube winding could help increase the fluid resident inside the, inside the heat exchanger. Hence, it will enhance the heat transfer process uh, through which uh, it will have a very significant result in outlet temperature variation. Moving on to the methodology, the CFD analysis will require a computer added design or CAD software namely as SOLIDWORKS which will be used to study the flow mechanism of the spiral tube heat exchanger. The design model is constructed using SOLIDWORKS consisting of two different main parts, namely as external domain, which is the 10-inch PVC cylindrical shell, and internal domain, which is the 12mm tube that carries cold and hot water for heat transfer process. The fluid subdomains, boundary condition, meshing, and goals are defined inside the CAD software or flow simulation section to insert every fixed and manipulated variables. The simulation is run and the expected results are recorded and tabulated for future improvement. During the simulation runtime, it is expected that the process will simulate the heat transfer coefficient, the initial and final temperature of hot and cold water, the heat transfer rate and the effectiveness of the design spiral tube heat exchanger. The fluid medium used are the hot and cold water to study the heat transfer process, a flow rate of 0.03 kg per second of hot water will be set inside the 12mm copper tube, while the cold water will flow into the 10-inch diameter PVC shell with 0.12 kg per second of flow rate. For the expected result or the preliminary result, uh, the amount of heat energy contained inside the copper tube, 12 mm copper tube inside the spiral tube heat exchanger rapidly decrease in temperature from the first flat spiral winding to the fifth winding. It seems that the cold water with a larger volume ratio to the hot water has absorbed a large amount of heat energy from the hot water, hence a slight increase in temperature occurred before exiting the cold water outlet. However, a significant change in temperature uh, has occurred proving that the heat transfer process is working for both hot and cold fluids. However, the cold water has only a slight change in temperature from 20 degrees and increase to 31.11 degrees Celsius. As for the hot water, it decreased in temperature from 70 degrees to 36.67 degrees Celsius on the outlet. And the overall, the heat transfer coefficient is also calculated, uh, which the value has proven to be about 932.7. This is the cut plot of temperature of the spiral tube heat exchanger. From the very left, you can see that the 70 degrees Celsius of hot water enters the 12 mm copper tube and then it circulates around the flat spiral tube winding on the first till the fifth windings and then exits on the hot water outlet. For the cold water, it enters the 10 inch PVC shell and then exits through the, <coughs> exits through the left side of the shell. 
we can see a large temperature reduction of the 12mm copper tube filled with hot water as it flows from the left to the right side of spiral tube heat exchanger. This is because a larger volume ratio of cold water that enters the 10-inch PVC shell helps to absorb the heat energy across the spiral tube. So, by increasing the diameter of the copper tube and the amount of spiral tube winding, I believe that the temperature change would be more significant for future improvements. So, before ending the presentation, we go a little bit about the references. So, these are the references uh, that I have used for this current semester. Well, it mostly consists of the past and recent years of research papers. All these papers covers the main reference of design, tube diameter arrangement, and the amount of flat spiral winding need for the spiral tube heat exchanger. Uh, before we wrapped up this presentation, we came across to our very last section, which is the gun chart. This represents all my actual planning and also the actual actions of my final year project this semester. Uh, notice that I had to take a longer time finding the journals. So this is because the students uh, have to find a very specific journal or research paper to study every bit of the product's mechanism before changing or making improvements out of it. So in my case, uh, I have to look into the design, diameter and also the amount of winding before changing its operational mechanism. That is why it took me about 8 weeks before completing all uh, my journal sections uh, and finding all of the references needed. So that is all from me. Um, thank you very much everyone uh, for lending your ears to listen to what I have explained for this across these presentations. Uh, be sure to watch this video in my YouTube channel Mechanical Memes and be sure to contact me whenever you have questions. So stay safe and good day everyone. Thank you.